Uh, what next for ISRO uh, after Chandrayaan 3? What are the next upcoming pro projects? Of course, Gaganyaan is there. Uh, when do we see our own men, women going to the space? Gaganyaan program is moving uh, steadily. It is a very complex pro program. Uh, the only point that we don't want to miss the very first attempt. Yeah. Uh, of course, uh, Chandrayaan 2 had that problem. So here we are very moving very, very cautiously to ensure that we do enough number of tests, enough number of simulation. We through, go through a very elaborate uh, development plan. And also we face certain challenges in terms of the last many years of like the COVID and also the global recession and global chip crisis, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So that put us a little uh, slow, but then we have picked up momentum now. How are, soon would we be in we are, we are going to, we are not, I am not defining any date for it right now. Eh? Uh, we, what we are focusing on to complete the design, to start testing. So the first of the major test, we have been doing hundreds of tests. Our uh, rocket is already human rated. But uh, the demonstration of the crew module and crew escape system is crucial. So that will happen possibly in the end of September, October. Oh, okay, great. Uh, the Prime Minister says that you were destined to be here and the soft landing to be done in Chandrayaan 3 because your name itself says the Lord of the Moon. How did it feel for, to talk to the Prime Minister and him talking about you in such a manner? Look, he is an inspiration for all of us, uh, for, uh, specifically for uh, the scientists and engineers in space department. Uh, he is a, a space buff as well. So he knows what we do, he has a reasonably good deeper understanding of its applications, the technology and he can you know, ask questions which are very tough for us itself. And so because of his great interest in the subject and, and he, naturally he will be excited to see the success and it assures us uh, further support and encouragement from the government and the people and he is, he is the one who will ensure us uh, that continued support and for us to expand the space sector in India and it is very evident uh, by his uh, space sector reforms uh, that has come and opened up new players to come inside to expand this possibility and also his interest to look at the future exploration missions like going to Venus and uh, further Mars or etc. So it actually shows the spirit that is there within all of us to see that India grows bigger. We are this. told that he's coming uh, this weekend to congratulate all of you here personally. Uh, how prepared are you to receive him and what celebrations <laughs> would be there when he no. comes? Uh, I, I am hopeful that he will be able to come and we all wait for that. Uh, when he comes, I think his uh, goal will be to congratulate us uh, and meet the people who, who worked behind the scenes. Uh, may, that, and he said that, way, that uh, to the, uh, each, and ISRO, each and every ISRO scientist and their family, he gave the greetings. I hope that uh, he may be interested to say that personally to them. So, and as soon as the landing was done, almost by 11, 12 o'clock, <coughs> a video got viral of you celebrating and dancing. I don't know if you have seen it or across all social media. Of course, it's an old video. Uh, did you still celebrate at home? Did you shake, shake a leg? Did you celebrate? Did you dance with happiness today? No, 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 not at all. I think those were uh, unconnected events. Correct. So when you unconnected events to this, there is no need to connect. This is a technical event in which that we were doing certain work all through yesterday night. And we were here, uh, even after the landing, for hours together of to achieve, achieve something. So we have to catch some sleep. That's all we, I did yesterday. Sir, and uh, uh, the Prime Minister spoke about the next solar project. Not just sun, but we would go beyond. Could you throw some light on it? See, we are already having that mission called Aditya L1, which is basically engineered to look at the sun, understand its coronal dynamics and its impact on solar weather and, in, and correspondingly the weather on Earth. So that mission is ready for launch now. September it will be launched. And uh, it will take another 120 plus days to reach that destination where it is going to be placed at L1 point. And after that, for the next five years, <coughs> I'm hopeful that it will give a very valuable scientific outcome to supplement the uh, Earth-bound uh, solar studies that we are doing. So Chandrayaan 2 is still orbiting is what we are told. How crucial it is to, are you getting the uh, communication through Chandrayaan 2? Is it been? No, we don't need Chandrayaan 2 at, uh, for communication in the nominal course. So it is able to reach up to the ground stations directly. But in case of any communication difficulties, Chandrayaan 2 will be useful. Yeah. So uh, have you already started sharing the data with the other space agencies or is it still yet to be done? No, with the science part is yet to be done. Is yet to be done? Yes. Uh, and when do we start seeing the results, sir? How soon do you think the experiments are carried out? We'll, we'll have to finish it in 14 days. Within 14 so we days. don't have any more much time left. Okay. That's fine. Uh, sir, and also the Chinese uh, space agencies have already taken the Chang'e 5 uh, mission, <coughs> took soil and came back. Maybe next few decades or years, are we also looking at something like that? And also the Artemis uh, is in this decade, scheduled in this decade as well, when people would go back to the moon. Uh, how do you see that ISRO can give 
some uh, contribution to these projects as well? See, there is no limit of imagination and thinking and capability that we have to have. Uh, we, we can do all of that, sample return missions, sending human beings to moon and Mars, landing on Mars, all these are within our reach in terms of technological capability. But what is most important is first to establish the competency in science sector and uh, also the money that we need to spend is huge, so that much resources we need to gather and then create that ecosystem within this country where this benefit of going doing all of this will actually accrue to each, the, each one of them. Scientific sector, technology sector, employment, etc. Et so based on that distance will be taken. So as we come to this end of an interview, one final message to Indians, what do you have to say of what ISRO has achieved? One final message to the Indians. So ISRO has been an inspirational organization the last 60 plus years we have created what uh, in a developed nation long back when we thought about going to space we created the launcher satellite and other capabilities including scientific capability it is something that we must rejoice that we have achieved such a level today uh, with a frugal budget and it also with a uh, in a governmental system that we could do this now the transition is happening and so many young people are interested to work in space and i invite all of them to come to space contribute and expand our space sector